From an art perspective, this episode is about me taking characters from mascot horror games like Five Nights at Freddy's and Poppy Playtime and turning them into dinosaurs. But to be totally honest, the art framing this episode was really just an excuse for me to write some goofy, funny banter between some of my original characters. Dr. Champagne McGregor, an ex-dinosaur geneticist who used to make video game inspired dinosaurs for a shady Jurassic Park ripoff called Dino Cross Park, and good old Benny Sharp, a mech maker who's got his own fair share of shady stuff in his own back. But whether you're here for the art, the banter, or both, I think you're gonna enjoy what we got today. So let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Welcome everyone to the new and improved Dino Cross Park. Now owned by Happy Big Smiles Co., where we are committed to giving all our patrons a truly happy big smile experience. If you'll all please follow me into the newly named Bizarro Soars exhibit, which is now legally distinct from affiliations to any video game franchises with characters resembling our dinosaurs. You know, Champ, I'm surprised you was willing to come back to your old place of work for this little spy mission. I thought you hated Dino Cross Park more than anything. Yeah, well, I... I did hate working here when I was making dinosaurs for the stupid theme park, but I think I'm over me hate now and wanted to come back and see if it, you know, triggers anything in me. Plus, since it got recently sold off to a new company, I'm kind of curious too if it's still super shady and dangerous or not. But, uh, th Benny, not to be rude or nothing, but who the flip is this kid with us? Oh, right, sorry, Sam. This is my new intern, off screen. Hey, Dr. Champagne, it's nice to finally meet you. I heard a lot of things about you, most of them good, and the rest of them great. All uh, right, so many questions coming to me right away. For one, what do you need an intern for, Benny? Two, why does he sound like a short, squeaky version of you? And three, did you say his name was off screen? Yeah, he's an aspiring superhero from my world, and the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation really wanted that someone to take him under their wing and to show him the ropes of being a hero. Or, as they put it more accurately, get him out of our hair and keep him out of our hair for as long as possible. Why he sounds like me is because it turns out he's from the same neighborhood from where I used to live back in Jersey. And finally, his name is off-screen because he's trying to join this team of movie-making themed superheroes. He thinks his powers would fit in real well with them. I know by asking this, it probably means I'm fueling this insane tangent we're going on, and we're gonna spend next to no time actually looking at or talking about the dinosaurs around us. But what is his powers exactly? When nobody is looking at him or noticing him, he can defy all laws of physics. Yeah, that's where I got the name, Doc. I'm like in the movie when a character does something impossible off-screen, but the writers just hand wave it away as possible because it happened off-screen. So you just gotta accept it. Well, that sounds pretty overpowered and ridiculous. Can we get a sample of that? Like, what can you actually do? All right, all right. I heard you was a bit of a skeptical guy, but that's what I like about you. Nobody pulls the wool over good old Dr. Champ. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna summon a banana out of nowhere. You ready? Well, I mean, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but uh, okay, I, I guess. Great, now uh, both of you close your eyes and just uh, don't pay attention to me, okay? Oh, right. Um, how long does we have to do this for? Not long, just g give me a sec, like a, a minute tops. Uh, wait, Benny, what does it sound like he's running away? Just be quiet and don't think about him, champ. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, you know it is. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Alright, uh, open your eyes. Oh, Right, well, yeah, I mean, you've got a banana, but you also look real winded. I'm pretty sure you just ran off and grabbed the banana. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, I, you know, I, I used my powers, got it off screen. You get it? I, I mean, seriously, we ain't far from the cafeteria. I think you just ran and stole it from there. If you really want to prove you got powers, get us something big like a helicopter or something. Come on, champ, leave the kid alone. He got you a banana. What? Well, he didn't get me a banana, he's eating it right now. Well, yeah, but I'm only eating half of it. You just gonna have the other half, Doc. All right, well, I mean, I could use a bite of food, so fine, I guess. Now, is we gonna talk about this dinosaur at all, or what? I mean, I guess we can if you want to, but at this point, let's be real, I don't think anybody really expects that from us anymore.
Now if you'll all continue to follow me, we'll move on to the terrain of the colorful creature dinosaurs, which are all legally distinct from the video game Rainbow Friends because Happy Big Smile Co. does not have any affiliation with the game's creators, as Dino Cross Park's previous ownership did. Wow, that's pretty funny. It's like when uh, Paramount sold Canada's Wonderland and the rides had to go from names like Top Gun and Tomb Raider to become things like Generic Flight Ride and Action Lady Fun Bags or whatever they call them now. What? Sure, I mean, I, I don't really get that reference. Yeah, most people probably won't and I shouldn't have wasted time on it. But anyway, you seeing anything shady off screen? Off screen? Hey, where'd the kid go? Right here, Benny, old buddy. Just needed some Java. Was feeling a little low energy and I wanted to keep my wits as sharp as your last name, pal. Vet, was you low energy? Now I'm scared of seeing you high energy. But also, where'd you get a coffee? I've been looking for a place to get one myself since the tour started. But cafeteria wasn't gonna be done brewing the next batch before we left. Used my powers and got it off screen. But I figured you might want one too, so boom! Off screen with a cup of joe for champagne, yo! Huh. Alright, thanks. Still skeptical about you having powers, but appreciate you, kid. It is kind of funny that this new ownership is trying to make people forget that these dinos were made to look like the characters from different video games. I mean, that Cyan one is obviously just Cyan from Rainbow Friends, because I made it look that way on purpose when I worked here. But you can also kind of get around that, I guess, since that character just is a dinosaur in the game, basically. But how did they think they was going to explain how that Quetzalcoatlus looking thing with a literal helicopter blade attached to it ain't just yellow for Rainbow Friends? I mean, I don't know this game you're talking about, but I'm guessing from context this yellow character has a helicopter attached to it or something. So you figure if they want to make it look different, they could just take the copter blades off it. You'd hope so, but I mean, I started this dino's incubation when I worked here, and I had to tell the ridiculous higher-ups that I couldn't just breed a dinosaur to grow helicopter propellers. But because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow welded that copter rig to the poor dino. They probably can't even take it off. Maybe I could get in there and figure it out, see if there's some kind of way to de-weld the tech from its body. I mean, does your powers let you super quickly learn a whole bunch about dinosaur anatomy and mechanical body augmentations? No, but I bet my buddy Montage on the film for Dal Super Team could do that. Montage? What the flip does I do? Oh, Montage, she's great. She can move at super fast speeds anytime she's actively learning a new skill. So she can go through a ton of training in a super short span of time. Learn to play the piano like Mozart in two hours once. It's like she's going through a training montage. What? How does someone get superpowers like that? I don't know, I wasn't there, but in a way you could say it happened off screen. Oh, Benny, this kid. This kid. Now we find ourselves at the newly completed Tyrannus Tar Pits, where you can find many of our dinosaurs that we genetically bred to be immune to any harm from even boiling tar. Is that... that looks like they just dumped a bunch of tar on a Utah Raptor. That's pretty rude. And I don't know about no harm, the tar looks like it bleeding melted its flesh off its face and now it's just a skull. Did you say Utah Raptor? Is that a thing? Is you still learning more about actual dinosaurs now? I don't know, you know, really, since I ain't forced to know things about them anymore, I do actually find them kind of interesting. I get that, Dr. Champ. When I was in school at the Skylands Academy, I really hated learning about ostriches. Every time they came up, I just wanted to tune out who cares about ostriches. But now you know what? I really like them. I even got an ostrich friend named Bert. Don't see him too much these days. He lives out in Australia. You know, off screen, I just don't know where to start with any of what you just said, so I'm just gonna not. Anyway, I wouldn't work in here during the production of this whole section of the park, but I'm willing to bet it was originally supposed to be in collaboration with the video game Bendy and the Ink Machine, on account of all the tar covering all the dinosaurs like it's ink. Wait, so these things are all based on video games here? Benny, is it weird to you that a bunch of the stuff we're seeing kinda looks similar to superheroes from our dimension? Weird? Yeah. Unexpected? No. The more time you spend with us off screen, the more you'll come to see that a lot of the coolest stuff out there in the multiverse is basically a ripoff of other things in the multiverse. A lot of duplicate sort of stuff out there. Huh. 
So do you think that means there's a whole bunch of other versions of me out there in the multiverse and one of them is living the best version of my life possible in an even better way than I am and that by going to visit all the different versions of me and seeing who's living the best life I could figure out how to live the greatest way possible to be as happy as possible but also instead of doing the work to make my life that good I could just kill the other version of me and take his place and start living that best life right now? Eh, maybe, but usually we find versions of folks that are more different than just, you know, live in slightly different ways. Like we'll find a dinosaur version of someone, or a superhero version, or a dragon version. Things like that. Oh, okay, never mind the thing I said then, that sounds cool, I wanna meet a dragon version of me. Jeez, it feels like we just about witnessed a supervillain's inciting incident monologue or something. Hey, that's filmmaking talk, Doc. You're speaking my language. Oh, right, so... Does that team you want to join have a guy named Inciting Incident too? Actually no, not on the team, but we got a villain that we call Inciting Incident. We call him that because we think he's going to create a whole bunch of aspiring superheroes because he's a serial killer who targets parents with young kids. Made a lot of orphans that guy has. Oh my god, that's awful. Is he close to catching him? Not yet, but I'm sure at some point when nobody's watching me or paying attention to me, I'll just get around to doing it. Ugh, off screen? Now you're getting it, Doc! And now the last stop on our tour. We will be observing the dinosaurs of the frightening nocturnal area Fantastico, a name that is solely in place because some of the previous branding has not yet been able to be painted over. Jeez. Probably could have gotten a little bit more creative with how they used the letters of FNAF. I wonder if me old Nightmare Freddy Fazbear T-Rex is still alive. It was pretty banged up the last time I was here. But also looks like they got some new Five Nights at Freddy's Dino since then too. I never made a Monty Gator Spinosaurus. Feel like it would have made more sense to make the thing a Dino Sucus if you ask me, but whatever. Now I think you're just flexing that you know things about dinosaurs. Unless Dinosuchus is a thing you're just making up on the spot, which I totally buy, I don't really know much dino stuff. No, it was actually a big crocodile thing, but who knows, maybe they work some of that thing's genes into this Spinosaurus too, because it does look kinda crocodile-like. Yeah, that it does. But uh, so Doc, we've been here a few hours, you feeling anything? Old anger coming up or stuff like that? You know what, honestly, as much as I'm glad I don't work here no more, and never would again, it's almost a bit nostalgic for me coming back here. I mean, it does remind me of how miserable I was when I was here, but that kind of just helps me remember how nice it is that I'm a lot happier now. And in a weird convoluted way, I never would have met you if I didn't work here, so I gotta appreciate that. And you know what, I'll say it, security in this place does seem like it's in pretty top-notch shape now. No breakouts, all the employees actually seem happy. Maybe a bit too happy in a creepy sort of way, but still, seems like new management has actually... No timing of that makes perfect sense. I am very sorry everyone, but I have just gotten word that someone has broken into one of our dinosaur containment centers and attempted to ride our flying yellow colorful creature and damage its flight apparatus. Please make your way to the exit promptly so we can ensure your safety as we deal with this situation. Oh, no worries, but where'd that kid go? Hey, uh, off screen, bud, you around here somewhere? I uh, think we really gotta get out of here. Oh, yo, champ, look, he's outside already, he's right there. Hey, uh, Doc and Benny, I did a thing, but it didn't go so well, so, uh, we should probably get out of here. Come on, I got us a ride. Is that... Does he have a helicopter? Where the flip did you get a... What? Wait, no, no. I stopped myself. You don't have to answer because I stopped myself. Uh, I got it off screen, baby. pow, -pow. Oh, boy. Well, you know what, Benny? Regardless of whether this kid's got powers or not, as your mum would say, at least he commits to the bit and he don't give a sh... If you enjoyed this, I recommend checking out my mascot horror playlist. I've worked with all of these franchises before, turning characters from these games into dragons, superheroes, mech armors, a whole bunch of different things. So browse that playlist and I bet you'll find something you like. But if you specifically want more banter, like in this episode, I'd watch the Five Nights at Freddy's Mech Armor Trilogy, which is also narrated by Benny Sharp and Champagne McGregor. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. 
And the thought I want to leave people with today is something that actually clicked in my head this week about the kind of people that I find I'm most drawn to spending time with now. And that is people who are kind to those they disagree with. So if someone disagrees with that person and they snap at them, freak out at them, insult them, then I'm gonna be less inclined to spend time with that person even if we agree on a lot of different world issues because I know if I eventually do disagree with them on something, they're probably gonna treat me that way. Whereas another person, if I disagree with them on a lot of things, but their reaction to someone disagreeing with them is being curious or still being kind and understanding why someone would have a different perspective than them, then it's not really a big deal to me if we have differing opinions. I'm still enjoying spending time with them. I think that's just some good food for thought. I love you all and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Artist Reboots, American Dragon, Jake Long.